The conclusion of the Rainhill trials proved once and for all that steam power would be the king of tractive motion for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, but it would be another 12 months before the railway would officially open. During this interim period, and spurred on by the success of Rocket's design, the company designed and built seven new locomotives. George was keen to experiment and moved to integrate the firebox and boiler, but keep the smoke box separate. Rocket 2 also went through a series of changes following her record-breaking run and to help improve her efficiency. Thanks to comments and the work of Timothy Hackworth, Rocket's boiler surface area was increased by the reduction in size and the increase in number of the boiler tubes, and it received its own purpose-built tender. But the biggest noticeable difference was the movement of its cylinders from 45 degrees to near horizontal. The movement of the cylinders stopped the unstable rocking motion that the cylinders caused as the engine moved, which in turn caused the engine to rock about on its springs. By moving the cylinders to this new position allowed for a smoother ride without losing the engine speed. This new arrangement on Rocket allowed for George and Robert to pursue a new idea. What if the motion could be hidden within the engine? In September 1830, the very month that the railway opened, the Planet Class rolled into the sunshine. The Planet Class was nothing the world had ever seen before. The first noticeable feature was the absence of outer cylinders. Its cylinders was located in a casing near to the smoke box and the boiler. With the cylinders and the piston rods now located underneath the boiler, it kept them warm, allowing them to work more efficiently. The engine now sported new buffers made of leather and horsehair, and unlike Rocket's smoke box, which was only secured by screws to the boiler, the smoke box was now airtight, which provided much better airflow and a better and stronger draft. The wheel arrangement on Planet was also unusual. Unlike Rocket, which led with its driving wheels, Planet's driving wheels were situated near the heavier firebox. Because of the extra weight put on the driving wheels, it gave them better adhesion to the rails than its predecessor. The driving wheels were driven by a cranked axle. Cranked axles were notorious for fracturing and Planet's was no exception. Because of Planet's design, any fracture of the crank axles would, would mean that the heaviest part of the engine would sit on its own axles, potentially causing the engine to collapse under its own weight. The company took this risk seriously and built Planet with not one, but two supporting frames. The outer frame was lined with wood and reinforced with iron, while a subframe gave extra support. If a crank axle failed, then the engine would remain in place. Finally, the engine had a brand new feature that is now considered the norm on steam engines, the steam dome. The dome allowed for the accumulation of steam and ensured that the steam pipe which took the steam to the cylinders was above the water level. The dome prevented any water being drawn into the cylinders which could damage the lubrication and split the cylinders when in use. After months of testing and planning, Planet was ready to roll onto the railway. It made its debut on the 4th of December 1830, weighing in an impressive 13 tonnes, including its tender. Thanks to its 129 boiler tubes, it carried an impressive 370 square feet of heating surface area, which was put to good use, towing 76 tonnes of passengers and goods from Liverpool to Manchester in two and a half hours, averaging about 15 miles an hour. Planet served to be the basis that modern day steam locomotives are built by even today but its class wasn't without its drawbacks, which were quickly realized. The short wheelbase, while better than Rocket, still provided an uneven ride. The weight itself was not spread, and this nearly brought the rails themselves into question of whether they could tolerate such a weight. 
The Stevenson company quickly realised the problem and made the decision to introduce a new class called Patentee, a larger, bigger brother to the planet. The first noticeable difference was the addition of the third axle. Adding the axle allowed for the Patentee class to be more stable and spread the weight, but allowed for the boiler to be built much bigger and give it more power. As the middle driving axle was known to stressing and braking around corners, the Stevenson company removed the flanges from these wheels to allow them to move better around these tight turns. The leading and trailing wheels retained the flanges in order to keep the engine on the rails. The patentee came in three variants, the 222 standard, or a later 060, and a 042 wheel design and rolled off the production line just three years after Planet's introduction. In just seven years, the original planets were withdrawn. Not even the number nine planet was saved after taking the speed record of traveling from Liverpool to Manchester in one hour and holding that record for several years. The Planet class were considered the first ever mass-produced locomotive and one of the first ever express mainline locomotives. Only nine were ever produced and were rebuilt in 1833. For many years, the class only existed in memoirs, technical drawings and engravings. But in 1992, thanks to the details in these drawings, the Friends of the Science and Industry Museum in Manchester were able to build a full-scale working replica. The replica planet works at the Museum of Science and Industry, taking passengers for rides around the site. At the time of writing, Planet is currently snugly locked away with many other working engines in the power hall while restorative works to the hall is completed. Each engine was carefully cleaned free of rust and dust before they were covered in a layer of protective wax. The wax coats the engine's workings and ensures they don't seize up during the work and are easier to move when the work is complete. Finally, the engines are covered with a tarpaulin and tied down, protecting them from any debris when the building is being worked on around them. Once the road buildings and the old railway station are renovated, it is hoped to bring Planet out of its hibernation and be able to grace the tracks once again. The power hall restoration started in 2019 and is it hoped to open again at some point in 2023 with a new heating system and a new roof insulation system, making the building more eco-friendly and reducing the carbon footprint. In the meantime, while we wait, we do have the Stevenson's company technical drawings and the many engravings of Planet, the first ever modern mass-produced steam locomotive.